So chapter one, we're going to cover reading and approaching the water. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to see Naoto here. He's going to approach the water, and as he comes up to the water, the first thing he's going to do, he's taking the chance to observe and look first. There's commonly trout sitting in very shallow water or very close to the bank, so we don't want him to charge into the water without taking a look. So he's stopping, he's seeing if there's any activity in there, he's watching for bugs, he's looking for current seams. You can see behind him he's got a little bit of an inside corner here. He's going to fish that current seam, fish like current seams. One of the reasons that he's come to this spot is anytime you've got a current seam, you've got fast and slow water meeting. That fast water, it's like a conveyor belt of food. It's always bringing food down to the fish, but it's more work to sit in. So those fish are going to sit on that slower edge where they don't have to work nearly as hard, but that fast water is always bringing food over. All they got to do is slip their head over, eat the food, get back. So he's looking for stuff like that. That's why he's identified this piece of water and yet he's still not charging into the water without taking a look. It's really important to always take a look before you go in. Now he's gonna start working his way into the water and he's always gonna start short. So what we talk about is doing a grid. You wanna start closest to the bank and then gradually make your cast working further over and then he'll take a couple steps up. And then he's gonna start his cast in close to the bank again and he'll gradually work his cast out. We can't control whether a fish eats our fly, we can only control if a fish sees our fly. So what he's always going to do is he's going to make sure that each time he casts, he's covering new water and not just 10 random casts. Here's what we see all the time when people just throw 10 random casts. Eight of them will be in almost exactly the same place, and then one will be way left and one will be way right. You might have put eight casts in a spot where a fish just wasn't hungry or a fish wasn't even sitting. But if we do a grid and we cover all that water, now we know that the fish has seen the fly. Again, we can't control if that fish comes up and eats Naoto's fly. We can control if we showed the fish the fly. If we do a grid and do things methodically, now we know that we've covered all the water. If there's a fish there, he's seen our fly. Hopefully he eats it. If he doesn't, we're going to move on to a fish that might. So when we're trying to identify spots that fish are going to sit, a really important thing to remember is fish are super lazy. Okay. It, because they're trout, we call them trophies and terms like that, but the reality is if they were people, we would call them fat, lazy slobs. Those are the fish that we're targeting all the time. They're looking to expend the least amount of energy for the most amount of gain. So, you see this water that Naoto's fishing in right now. You see he hasn't walked in very deep. He's on an inside corner that that water's much slower than that heavy water on the outside. These fish are going to gravitate towards that water that's much easier to sit in there's still a decent amount of flow in this water. In the summertime when it's really hot and there's a lot of sun and the, the water temps are coming up, one of the things you're gonna see is fish gravitating to water that has a lot higher flow because it's more oxygenated water. They'll sit in very fast water, but they're gonna find a spot to hide. All it takes is a, you know, a rock the size of a, a fist and they can tuck right behind that and now they're not fighting that current. So they're not gonna hold up in that heavy water in the column, they'll tuck right down on the bottom and sit in that bottom. So you're looking for water that's rough. You can always identify what's happening on the bottom by looking at the surface of the water. When we look at the surface of the water that he's fishing in here right now, you can see that rough water tells us we've got bigger boulders here. We've got a more, we've got a less uniform bottom here and it shows on the surface when you see choppier waves. We've also got more gradient here. More gradient means more flow. It's going to push more food down to these fish. We've also got a situation on the inside corner where the river is a big wide flat up above us here and then it comes down and it narrows a fair bit. So you've got a funnel. Anytime you've got food that funnels to a fish, fish are going to try and sit in a lie like that. So that's the reason of the big river like this. He walks in at the head of this run because we're looking for that inside corner. We've got nice chop in there where there's a bunch of big boulders in there. Those fish can hide behind the boulders. And we've also got a funnel where the river just came down to about a third the width it was, 50 yards above us here. By funneling all that food, now those fish are going to sit in that. The river comes way out from the left and it all pushes all that food is going to push right in to where he's standing there. But it's not that outside bend that's moving very quickly that's probably too much work for most of those fish to sit in. Another piece of water that we're going to talk about is a big flat. One of the things we hear all the time when we're guiding on a river the size of the bow is how do you fish it? It's so intimidating. I walk up and I don't know where to fish. People see a big flat like what's up above us here and all they see is a big flat section of water. Where do I fish it? 
What we need to learn how to do is find microstructure and fish each little piece of structure. You can't fish a 300 foot wide section of river all at once. There's way too much water there and it's very intimidating. First of all, I often wouldn't go to those really wide flat stretches, but you will find some really big fish sitting in shallow water. So why do fish sit in shallow water? There's only one reason for them to sit in water that's very shallow and where they're far more exposed to predators, and that's to eat. They're not gonna rest there, they're not gonna hide there, they're sitting there because they wanna eat. So a big, flat, shallow flat can still hold some really impressive fish, but the most important part of that is they're feeding fish. They're not just fish that are there resting. It's not like you go to a deeper run and you've got fish that got spooked out of the shallows and they're sitting there because they're scared. You've got fish that are there because they're resting. You may have some fish that are in there because they're feeding as well. If you're talking about a shallow flat, every fish in there is there to eat. So those are good fish to target. So what are we looking for on a big shallow flat like that? One of the first things you want to look for is microstructure. If the water is 10 inches deep everywhere and then all of a sudden there's a little depression that drops down to 14 inches, that's enough to hold a fish. If there's somewhere where there's a weed line and they can tuck up against that weed line and hide, that's a place to fish. Fish each little piece of structure. Every little depression, every little boulder you see that causes um, a riffle or a deflection on the surface, anywhere that you see taller waves instead of shorter waves. You're looking for microstructure and then fish every single little piece of microstructure. Dissect it. Don't just see the whole piece of water at the same time. It's like if you're hunting ducks. You can't flock shoot. You can't just shoot somewhere into the flock of ducks. You need to pick that one bird that you're going to aim at. Here we need to pick that one little depression, the one little bucket. Pick apart a big flat like that into little tiny pieces and then just fish each little tiny piece. There are endless little pieces of structure in a flat like that to fish, so pick one and just start working your way up. We always want to start at the back and then we're going to work our way up if we're fishing dry, right? I don't want to cast across a fish and line a fish, so I start low and then I'm going to gradually work my way up. Don't worry about trying to make hero casts and giant long casts. Just nice short casts that are controlled, for easy for you to mend, easy for you to manage your line and then you're gradually gonna keep working your way up and just, there's a piece of structure, there's a little depression, I'm gonna fish that, okay, I fish that, okay. There's a little deflection where that water's broken on the surface. Think about broken water on the surface like window tint. When a fish is sitting in really shallow water, that window tint keeps them safe. Just like if you've got window tint in your vehicle, you feel like people can't see you as well, you've got just a little bit more privacy. Fish enjoy a little bit of privacy when they're in that shallow water to feed, so look for spots like that. Okay. So we're going to talk about a classic piece of trout water, which would be a deflection. You often hear people talk about casting in behind deflections. So this is the classic scenario of a deflection. We've got very fast water that's being deflected out because of this rock. This rock is pushing that current out. and We've got a real calm pocket right here. This leaf lands and it just sits. You see this foam collecting here? Food gets trapped in these deflections and so a fish will sit right here or they'll sit right on that edge because that slow edge means they don't have to fight this heavy current. Like if I try and stand here, this is really hard to stand in water that's this heavy. It kind of takes my feet out from underneath me. But right here, there's absolutely no issue. A fish wants the least amount of work for the most gain. This fast water is a conveyor belt of food. So they're gonna tuck into a pocket like this because this rock is breaking that current, but all that food's right there. If they get spooked from any predators in the bank, one tail kick and they're into fat, fast water. Fast water is security for a fish, okay? So this is a classic piece of water that a fish will sit in. Now, one thing to understand about deflections is where a fish sits in them can vary depending on the body of water you're sitting on. We're very, very used to our fish sitting right at the top of a deflection. On the bow, some of our biggest fish sit at the head of the deflection because one, the more dominant the fish, they want to have first crack at food. They're not going to sit at the very back and let all these other fish eat food first. Now, there are rivers where that's not the case. There are some rivers where the biggest fish, you'll commonly find them near the back of the deflection, not way up at the top, they'll sit way at the tail of it. So that's kind of something that you have to read and learn to figure out on your body of water. But if you know that these fish are gonna be looking for the deflections, that's something that you also should be looking for as well. It doesn't matter if this deflection is created from a rock, a clump of grass, 
a log in the water, anywhere where you get something, an obstruction that breaks the current and leaves a calm pocket in behind it, that's a great place for a fish to sit. So we're gonna try and show you now how in a situation with this very fast water, it'd be really hard to get any type of drift just casting straight across. So if Steve were to cast at me right now, cast straight in here, Steve, and he lands it right at my feet, bounces off me, and the fly's gone already, right? So he landed it right here where we wanted it, but it immediately drug out of there because he cast in a straight line in this fast water, pulled his line out instantly. Now watch what happens when he does a reach cast and he puts it in the same place, but he does that modified reach cast we were talking about and he's gonna get an actual drift in here. So toss it in here on a modified reach. So now look at the fly. The whole way through, that's, that's the first time that the fly drug. So he got a drift all the way through there without any drag on it. A fish had every opportunity to come up and grab that fly. There's no drag on it simply by doing that modified reach. Flies there, drifting through, completely fishable coming through there because he's reaching across his body. He stacked all the line upstream so that the fly line and the fly can move through at the same pace. Deflections like this are a key piece of trout structure to look for on any river.